Uh, thank you very much, Victor. Um, I hope you can hear me. My name is Douglas Rono, and uh, I'll be the one taking you through this uh, demo, uh, th through this webinar. So the topic of today is uh, basically ArcGIS, uh, how you can be able to integrate uh, imagery uh, in ArcGIS uh, with a special emphasis in the agricultural uh, field. So uh, what we're going to talk about is how you can use ArcGIS to collect, maintain, and uh, also analyze all your agricultural data uh, in one centralized system. So uh, basically, uh, for those uh, learning about ArcGIS today, uh, or uh, for those who are aware, ArcGIS basically is uh, what we call an integrated uh, WebGIS platform, where you can be able to share or manage your JS data uh to be able to share it and to be able to provide access to different kind of content so we have various applications some run on the desktop uh others on the web and others on mobile devices and uh, they are all interconnected by one centralized uh system whereby you can be able to uh uh author maps you can be able to analyze your data and you can be able to share this kind of information uh to other people uh within uh your organization or uh, globally so uh, when we uh, we call ArcGIS also, uh, when we talk about imagery uh, within ArcGIS, uh, you can use ArcGIS comprehensively uh, to be able to manage uh, anything related to imagery because uh, there are various ways you can apply uh, the ArcGIS system uh, with regards to imagery. You can be able to use uh, it as a system of insight whereby uh, you extract information from imagery. We, there are various ways, uh, types of images you can be able to uh, make use of as you're going to see. And you can be able to pre-process this information to be able to give you, uh, or rather to make your imagery uh, ready to use and be able to use it to generate information from that imagery. And uh, aside from that, you can be able to use it as a system of engagement. That is, you can be able to share these imagery products uh, to those people who uh, need it, like various stakeholders can be able to make use of already analyzed information that you've uh, generated from your imagery uh, to for the various kinds of decision making. So um, uh, you can also use it to manage and process all your imagery. So more or less like a centralized storage management system whereby you can be able to uh, curate this information and uh, all these uh, products that you've generated within the platform as well. So, and, and uh, so uh, there are various uh, ways uh, you can apply, again, images uh, in ArcGIS. Uh, we are aware there are various providers of such kind of uh, imagery products and uh, the ArcGIS system can be able to support a wide array of sensors. That is, uh, whether they are based on satellite images or uh, aerial imagery, you can be able to apply them and use them within the GIS system. So uh, this slide here just talks a, a little bit about some of the supported uh, sensors that we uh, can be able to uh, use their images uh, within ArcGIS. So uh, we have things like uh, sensors like Spot, Pleiades, uh, Landsat, and Sentinel, among others that you can be able to make use of. You can also be able to make use of, like I said, aerial images uh, from uh, collected uh, maybe by aerial uh, aircrafts and so on and so forth. And even drone uh, image, you can be able to be processed with uh, ArcGIS system. So uh, there are various types of analysis that you can be able to do in ArcGIS. And uh, these are just some of the few analyses uh, that have been added uh, that were not there before and uh, others that have been improved uh, uh, with regards to their processing times and be able to, and uh, additional uh, improvements on some of the things they can be able to do. So uh, there are various, uh, may not be able to talk about most of them, but uh, there are many tools that you can be able to make use of uh, images in ArcGIS uh, for processing, uh, doing things like segmentation and classification. Uh, one of the main uh, aspects or one of the main things that you can be able to, uh, that one of the main questions that drives most agricultural uh, agencies or people uh, doing analysis, imagery analysis within agriculture is uh, the yield, expected yield and so on and so forth. You can be able to use that to predict uh, the yield or so on and so forth. So uh, 
again, uh, there are various also uh, ways you can be able to process the images uh, within ArcGIS. We have what we call raster functions, which generally give you a preview of uh, the kind of analysis or the kind of results you would otherwise get from running the actual tool. So we have new functions that you can be able to make use of uh, within uh, ArcGIS to be able to support uh, various types of analysis, uh, be it classifications, NDVI, among others, and uh, you can be able to apply all that within the system. So when we come back again to agriculture, so these are just a select few uh, items that you can be able to do within agriculture very well within ArcGIS. Uh, you can be able to do precision farming, uh, whereby, for instance, you're interested in mapping out exact locations of uh, where you'll be able to plow your field, where you'll be able to plant uh, to the centimeter level. For instance, if you need to space your, maybe your plantation with beach uh, uh, trees or uh, uh, whatever it is you're planting within exact dimensions, you can be able to use ArcGIS to uh, applications in imagery to do that. You can be able to run uh, crop health analysis tools, uh, just tools that will be able to give you an idea about uh, your plantation. How is it faring? I mean, uh, are there diseases? Are there things that can be able to affect the overall output? You can be able to map compliance, whether they, uh, they're mapped, if there's a regulatory agency that uh, you uh, focuses on agriculture, you can be able to map compliance mapping, and finally, uh, yield estimation. So these are just a few snapshots of some of the things you can be able to do. And uh, I'll uh, go to now a demo, uh, just to show you, uh, a few applications uh, that you can be able to uh, work with ArcGIS. So even as I present, uh, in case you have any question or uh, any uh, clarification that you seek, please feel free to type them on the chat section and uh, some of uh, our panelists will be able to answer it even as we proceed. But we'll also take a question and answer session towards the very end. So allow me to just uh, share my screen where I'm going to do the demo and uh, then we can be able to proceed. So um, I hope uh, you can be able to see my screen now. Um, uh, the, I'm pre uh, presenting a demo on uh, a desktop application, uh, we, one of our desktop applications called ArcGIS Pro, uh, which basically is a mapping platform that you can be able to also uh, process your images uh, there, do pre-processing before you use uh, various tools to analyze your images to give you uh, information outputs. So uh, basically, um, uh, this what I'm presenting on the map here using this application is uh, an an area of interest within uh, Del Monte area in Fika, whereby uh, this is an area where uh, for those who've been there, it's a highly agricultural area where they plant uh, they have plantations uh, within that area to generate products for uh, their factories uh, like. Uh, pineapples among others, uh, just to mention a few. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see, I've uh, created a polygon uh, represented by uh, this uh, white boundary here that shows, um, that, that can be able to show uh, the area of interest. For instance, if you want to focus on this particular area that covers a section of that farm uh, to be able to check uh, if, uh, you, what was the uh, situation maybe in uh, 2009, uh, maybe what was the farm output or uh, at a given planting season or uh, and compare that maybe with 2018. So what I've added uh, is I've added uh, two images uh, which were located, which I, be able, uh, I uh, Landsat images uh, downloaded from uh, the Landsat sensors that uh, cover the time periods that I'm interested in. So we have one for 2009 uh, and one for 2018. So uh, the first thing that uh, you need to do when you get these images, especially when uh, Landsat images, of course, uh, 
they come in bands and each band represents uh, various things. Like you can see for the Landsat images, we have uh, bands ranging from, that is for the 2007, uh, 2009 image, uh, which was collected using Landsat 7. Uh, you can see it has up to eight bands uh, and then additional uh, uh, bands as well. So uh, to be able to display it on the map, uh, first of all, when you load them one by one, you'd notice that they just represent uh, the image as it is raw. But you can be able to use some JS, uh, some tool within uh, ArcGIS Pro called uh, Composite Bands that you can be able to combine bands to give you a specific output. Uh, so the tool, uh, when you search uh, uh, the Composite Bands, you'll find it under the geoprocessing tools and use that to combine your bands in a way that you want to generate uh, a certain uh, output. For instance, I'm interested in, uh, let's, let me open the output that I generated using the composite bands. Uh, if you want to render your image to display agricultural fields or uh, where there's a plantation in bright green uh, field, uh, you, you can be able to use uh, a band combination. When it lands at seven, you can use band combination uh, five, four and one to give you that output, which I've uh, loaded there on the map. Let me just turn off the image base map so that you can easily see that. So areas that are highlighted in bright green are uh, areas which represent uh, on your map where there's uh, a lot of vegetation. So once you, you combine those bands using this tool here, you can be able to get generate an output raster, which is similar to what I've uh, showing you. And uh, again, when you go back to our data set, now uh, we compare now the Landsat 8 bands uh, images for 2018. Uh, for 2018, it was uh, generated using Landsat 8, which is a relatively new sensor uh, for Landsat images. So you can see, again, there are all these different bands, but to generate the same output, rather to render the agricultural output, you need to combine bands 6, 5, and 2, which I've done here. And uh, as you can see, uh, that's how it appears in 2018. So again, uh, one thing you can notice is uh, the image appears cropped based on the area of interest, which I added on, I sh showed you earlier. So again, within ArcGIS, we have tools that you can use to clip raster. And uh, the tool, just like I've mentioned, the name is called Clip Raster. You can search for it in case you want to center your analysis in a given area of interest. And that's what I did for the over, the actual raster was a big, much bigger than this, but uh, you can use this tool to clip it and specify the output extent using a polygon field, which uh, a polygon layer, which uh, is again, this, uh, 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 this uh, region of interest that I added on the map. So that will give you an output, which uh, will appear, uh, will just cover the exact area that you want to do your analysis from. So uh, you can compare the two, even at a glance, you can see uh, the way it differs with regards to areas with uh, high uh, green, green uh, agricultural uh, bands uh, showing there. You can use, uh, from Pro, you can use uh, the appearance uh, tab to be able to, uh, to be able to swipe basically to see uh, if you zoom in a bit, you should be able to see uh, uh, the way they, they compare uh, areas that underlie each other. Uh, you can use, in the appearance app, you can use a swipe uh, tool to be able to do that. So the next thing I'm going to basically do is uh, to uh, run a classification tool on both of these uh, images, just uh, the unsupervised classification tool, uh, which we call the ISO cluster. So I'll start with the uh, 2009 images. So I'll search for that tool. Uh, it's called ISO cluster to give me an idea how uh, which pixels in these images are covered by. Uh, if my interest in plantation, for example, uh, the unsupervised classification basically automatically does that for you, groups together pixels that are related. Like for instance, pixels that are located around this area will be assigned to one class and uh, pixels that are located around maybe 
any other area, maybe be it bare land, be it water bodies, you can, uh, it does that automatically for you and gives you an output. So for the input raster band for this uh, tool, I'll use uh, the 2009 image. And then I can specify because it's a small area. I just, I'm, I'm just interested maybe in uh, four classes, for example. And then I navigate to where I want to save my output. I'll just go to where the geodatabase uh, that is this source data is. And uh, I'll select the 2009. Uh, I'll give it the name. Maybe I add uh, uh, maybe unsupervised at the end. Uh, just to distinguish this output. Uh, maybe I can call it unsup, something like that. And then uh, I can run the tool just to for it to give me the output. So you can just give it a moment to run. So what it does, it just classifies your raster image into four distinct classes. So any pixel that are similar in terms of their spectral signatures uh, will be assigned a specific uh, value and color. So you can see from my map, uh, if I was to uh, uh, zoom in a bit, I'll be able to, you can see uh, areas located around here. Uh, let me just turn this off and compare it with the original images. The color pink value one is assigned to pixels that are in this area, which the agricultural uh, renderer gave us like green in color. So I can choose to either change the color to be represent something greenish, maybe from pink to greenish to make more sense. And uh, we can also see uh, pixels that are located uh, uh, around uh, this particular, given a color green, uh, I think bright, this light green color could be cultivated areas I'm thinking, but to, to get a true picture, you, you could uh, you could basically uh, go to the field, do ground truthing, just to have a rough idea about what they are and so on and so forth. Again, uh, also using the same analogy, uh, pixels that are given the, um, uh, is it, let me just compare again, maybe in a di different area. The, uh, the, the light, blue color could be bare land, uh, just for instance, maybe you can give it a color that represents that easily. And uh, yeah, I think the other one could be representative of water, water bodies if I'm not wrong, uh, but you can just compare that uh, maybe around here. Yeah, but anyway, uh, for, but if our interest is just purely the plantation, this should do just okay. And uh, you can be able to, in the symbology section, you should be able to uh, also give this particular pixel the exact color and the labeling that is appropriate. So as you can see here on my map, we have uh, a represented, uh, a, uh, a map that is classified given those parameters that I've mentioned. And if I was to uh, open the attribute table of this particular, this particular, uh, classified image, you'd find it only has four rows based on the classes that uh, we mentioned. And these are what we call the pixel count of each uh, class. So you remember I mentioned value one could possibly represent agricultural values and uh, value two could possibly represent maybe cultivated uh, land or uh, so on and so forth. And if your interest is in also getting the exact area, you can do a calculation within a uh, Act within ArcGIS Pro to give you the value of that area. But first, before you do that, you need to ask yourself first, uh, these pixels, uh, uh, you know, a pixel is uh, on a raster is just like a, a more or less like a, a grid uh, or rather a particular area on the, uh, the raster is divided into multiple grids. So one particular pixel represents one grid, which uh, is counted as, uh, is counted here. So if you want to uh, ask yourself, what is the area of that one grid so that you multiply by this pixel count to give you an area, you can do that from the, just right click the raster, uh, the classified raster, go to properties, then uh, within the properties tab, you should see the source. Under source, there is now this uh, section here called raster information, which you can be able to see the pixel size uh, 
in both X and Y. So each pixel, as you can see, is 30 by 30. But again, you'd need to ask yourself how many, what are the units? So you can get the units from the spatial reference. So uh, here where it's written linear unit, you can uh, get that particular unit, which is we are seeing each pixel is 30 by 30 meters uh, in size. So using that information, you can do a calculation with the, uh, in your raster attribute table. So if I was talking the attribute table, I add a field where I want to base my uh, area or rather to, to, uh, to calculate the area. I can call it maybe area, maybe in hectares. Uh, I can call it maybe area hectares. And then the field type, we'll call it maybe uh, double to allow uh, us to add decimal uh, values if possible. So I'll save that. And uh, once I save that uh, record, uh, the next thing I can do is you, you'd see the new field is added there. Uh, to my attributes, then I can right click that field and do a calculate calculation to give me uh, to specify what type of calculation I want to do. So uh, the calculation I want to do is to multiply the count. You, you notice that I mentioned we have the count that gives a count of value one, which we mentioned is agriculture has one around 107,000 pixels. So we want to calculate, multiply that times, we know one pixel is actually 900 meters squared if you multiply the 30 by 30. So we can say times 900. And then uh, if you now want to give that value in hectares, you can uh, divide it by uh, 10,000. So you know that uh, probably you want to be interested in the value in hectares. So we'll just divide that by 10,000 to give you the conversion into hectares. So when I run my tool, uh, you'll see the actual area in hectares per uh, per class is added to my uh, to my to my image. So again, you can also, if you're interested, is you can be able to do a chart uh, just to run uh, create a chart that can give you that information maybe in a, in a, just some quick analysis within uh, ArcGIS. So you just right click the layer and select create a chart. And then uh, the chart properties dialog box opens. So you can say, I want to create a chart uh, using the value. And uh, my interest is in uh, the maybe the sum of the area in hectares, for instance, just to compare the two with, with regards to uh, class one. Uh, this is the area in hectares, which is around 9,600. Uh, 9644 which we mentioned is vegetation uh class two uh which could be cultivated land is around 13,000 hectares uh, class three is 12,000 and so on and so forth so you can do that as well uh using uh ArcGIS pro so uh the same procedure can be applied to the 2018 image uh i'll just quickly do that so you see in our image here, I've now loaded the 2018 uh, raster. Uh, I can quickly run this analysis tool that I did, uh, ISO cluster. Uh, now this time I choose uh, 2018. Uh, and then the number of classes, we can leave it as four. Uh, here we can replace the output from Landsat 7, call it Landsat 8, and the year to be 2018. And then, uh for also in the name i can now say the uh the bands that i used for uh this could be bands uh six five and two just to give uh a rough idea of uh what uh we're able to do there so uh i can call it band six uh five and two uh as the output so after that, I'll just click run. You should be able to quickly generate for me the classes. Then I do the uh, calculation to give me the actual area in 2018 as well. So again, uh, one, one other thing to note that is uh, you'd realize that in our image, uh, in this case, uh, because we are using a different sensor and a different, uh, which is Landsat 8, the bands could be different. And also in the analysis, uh, you notice that value assigned to band one could possibly be another thing apart from agriculture. So maybe we can just compare that. We see agriculture is the bright pink color and it's given to band two, unlike which was done in Landsat 7. So you can 
I can just quickly uh, uh, do those colorings based on what I am um, able to see. So band one, which is a gray area could be cultivated land maybe. Uh, this one here, you can call it maybe, you can give it a color similar to what you gave for the other. Uh, the rest, you can just leave it like that just to uh, have a rough idea of where the main agricultural fields. I think band three in here, which is represented by pink. Uh, yeah, we can just uh, give it a different color just for it for, we can make it, at, can assume it's uh, bare land. So uh, this is now how it possibly could look like in 2018. And uh, again, uh, when I uh, calculate the area, I'll just use the same approach, add a field and uh, be able to uh, give it maybe maybe area hectares. Uh, this time we can call it 2018, just to distinguish it from the other one. Uh, I can call it 2018. And then uh, the field type, you can use again double and then save the uh, field, then do the calculation using the exact same formula that we did previously. So I'll uh, calculate the field. Uh, and then I uh, remember what I did, I just multiplied the count, uh, multiplied times 900 to get the area in square meters, then divide that with uh, 10,000 to give me the areas in hectares. So same approach, I'll just do that quickly uh, to give us that particular output. Yeah, so, uh, So uh, just give me a moment to think of stop sharing for some reason. So let me share again. Yeah, so we've gotten the area in hectares. Uh, as you can see uh, here in Landsat 8, the band that represent agriculture is band two that gives us an area of around 6,000 hectares. Uh, compare that with what we had in, uh, uh, Lands 2009, agriculture had an area of around 9,000. So you can see there's been a decrease in terms of uh, area. You can still use the chart to give you the, uh, to create a bar chart again, uh, same approach just to compare the two if you wanted to and uh, give you uh, that particular information uh, as a chart, just uh, that particular area as a chart and uh, you can compare the two charts also side by side uh, just to give you a rough idea on how uh, they they work so you can see uh, the comparison of area in 2009 for the various bands and in 2018 so uh, that is one of the things you can be able to work with uh, with regards to imagery uh, within uh, ArcGIS Pro so uh, you they are Quite a number of tools because of time we may not be able to go through most of these tools but uh within uh if you have time you can go through uh just uh when you load the raster you will see uh on the ribbon up here there's a particular area that focuses purely on imagery as long as you've loaded the raster because this is usually uh ArcGIS pro is usually ribbon uh it's uh you can be able to be able to unlock some of these images uh, tools using uh, uh, ArcGIS Pro. And uh, lastly, uh, I also wanted to share, show you a way you can be able to share some of these uh, images. Uh, there is uh, a web application uh, that I, I wanted to, to be able to show you as I conclude, just uh, we call it the Landsat Explorer app uh, that also uh, that can you can be able to uh, use to just uh, display uh, or rather run quick analysis of Landsat uh, imagery on the web. Uh, I'll just open it so that you are able to have a look at it. So uh, the Landsat Explorer app is more or less uh, is updated more or less on a daily basis that contains all the Landsat images. Uh, of ranging from the 70s to date, and it's updated almost every two weeks. So uh, these images, you can be able to just, you don't need to download anything, you just uh, do your quick analysis on the web and uh, you should be good to go. 
So let me just uh, open it so that you have a look at how it looks like uh, the interface and uh, you should be able to just uh, get an understanding of how you, what some of the things you can be able to do uh, within this particular application. So uh, what you're seeing on the screen is the user interface of that app. You can, if you have an ActJS online credential, you can log in to be able to even load your own data sets when you're doing your analysis. You can use this to find a place. Uh, let's say I'm interested in uh, Fika, where I said uh, the previous analysis that we did on the desktop app is, uh, you'd see the map zooms it to an image of Fika and shows you the most uh, recent image uh, that probably was updated for that particular area. Uh, the Del Monte farms will be around these same areas again. And uh, again, based on what we did, you can also use uh, uh, the first tool there shows you different ways you can render your image. If you're again interested in agriculture, that is the one that is selected by default. Uh, you can see the areas which possibly could be having agricultural farms highlighted in bright green. Uh, if you're interested in natural color, how they will look to the human eye, uh, you can select the natural color rendering. Uh, the map loads automatically to give you how you can be able to see that image using different color uh, band combination. For natural color, uh, is usually uh, I think for Landsat H should be around four, three, two. Uh, you composite those to give you this particular rendering. Among others, you can if you're interested in maybe doing a uh, vegetation index, uh, just to, this is usually good uh, for analyzing vegetation stress and uh, uh, areas which have uh, high stress. Uh, if it's a plantation, are usually highlighted in a brighter uh, reddish color hue or something like that. So again, you can also compare uh, images for various time zones. Like for instance, I'm interested in maybe comparing today's image and uh, and maybe another image uh, from another time zone. You can use this uh, swipe and then load your image uh, to be able to give you that uh, rough idea uh, how it will look like uh, in, that, in that particular instance. And uh, let me just uh, activate one and uh, search for that particular rendering. So here, Taking a while to load. Uh, so that's natural color. Let's go to agriculture. And uh, so uh, basically, you can be able to, if you want to swipe, you can do that. And uh, you can also select based on time. For instance, what I'm showing is the latest, which is in uh, August last year. If I'm interested maybe in uh, a different time zone, I can use this slider to give me, this is how it looked like in 2016. I can go all the way back to uh, in the 70s, those times images were not very clear and you can see that uh, here, but, uh, you can be able to compare and contrast those kinds of uh, analysis uh, on the fly using uh, this particular image, uh, this particular tool. So again, this is these others are just additional tools that you can be able to do uh, or analysis you can be able to do. You can be able to compute change detection uh, if you wanted. You can be able to identify a few features, add data from Akis Online if you wanted, and also uh, export some of these layers or rather uh, as cheap images and so on and so forth. So basically that's what I had to present for this particular uh, demo. Now I'll welcome any uh, question. I'm not sure if uh, the, some of the questions have been asked in the chat. Let me just 